In this video, we're talking about sticks. That's right, folks. Well, we refer to basically any type of stand, tripod, anything that you'd hang lights or a camera on, we refer to as a stick. You guys can call it whatever you like, but I like calling them sticks. Okay, Logan is gonna help me out because we have a bunch of these sticks to show you all. So Logan, why don't you give me first our tripod? Number one, give me the tripod, yes. Did you see his lovely hands? Logan has such beautiful hands. He could be a hand model. Okay, so this is the Mi Photo, and this is actually the Mi Photo Globe Globetrotter Carbon Fiber, okay? They have several different versions of their, their tripods. They have the Mi Photo Road Trip as well as the Globetrotter. The Road Trip is a little bit of a less expensive, smaller tripod. The Globetrotter is just a little bit bigger, holds a little more weight and so forth, and you can get both variants in either just the standard aluminum or carbon fiber. I offer carbon fiber because it's a little bit stronger, more durable, and it's also lighter. All right, so these guys, they start from anywhere between 150 all the way up to $350, depending on whether you're buying the aluminum or the carbon fiber variants. But this is one area I would say this. We've used a ton of tripods, and there's lots of fantastic tripod brands out there. There's lots of brands that you can invest in, like Really Right Stuff. They make great tripods, great adapters and mounts and so forth, but you're gonna spend a lot of money on them. Granted, they're gonna last you forever. There's also a lot of really cheap tripods out there that basically you spend you know, 50 bucks on and they'll last for six months and then they break and you have to get a repurchase every single six months or every year you're gonna have to buy more tripods. What we found from all of our testing and from our usage is that MiPhoto offers a fantastic product at a great value. So based on the price, yes, it's not the least expensive tripod out there and it's also not the most expensive, but what you're getting for that price is a fantastic product. So it's one of those areas I would recommend just spending a little bit of money on. Don't always go with the cheapest option because in the long run, it will end up costing you more. Now this tripod features the quarter twist legs, okay? So I kind of dig the quarter twist legs because it makes it very easy and simple to uh, open and close. They also have the snapping legs, the ones that kind of clip close, which are great too. Um, quarter twist is kind of, I don't know, just simple. But each one of them does have their own like advantages and kind of disadvantages. Sometimes the, uh, the quarter twist knobs, these need to be tightened or loosened every now and then. But you can see how small this will fold up to and actually in its travel mode it gets even smaller because the legs can actually fold up. So you can basically turn the head just a little bit and then fold the legs up right here. So we can put this into Uber travel mode. Well this will fit into any um, carry-on case, okay? So these guys get really, really small. So check that out. That's my full tripod. The other thing that's cool about this is that they feature Arca Swiss plates. And these Arca Swiss plates are incredibly inexpensive to get. You can get Arca Swiss plates on Amazon for like 10 bucks, which is nice because we constantly lose tripod plates. And so we don't have to buy 20, $30 plates for these guys. All right, so that's it for our tripod. Now let's go ahead and show you our most typical light stand. This is the Manfrotto Nano Stand. Okay, now as you can see, this guy is, is not very robust in terms of like, it's not designed to hold a lot of weight. We use this for basically our single flash mounted light stand when we're typically shooting bare bulb. If you are shooting with an umbrella or you're doing whatever modification to this, you need to make sure that this is weighted and that you know, preferably someone's holding it because it's really not the kind of stand that you wanna put a lot of weight on. But these are the stands that we'll use in like the corners of a wedding reception. You know, we'll use these on engagement shoots when we're bare bulbing and those kind of things because they're small, they're very you know, unobtrusive and so they can get in and out very easily. We also have on top of this just a little adapter. You can buy these adapters on Amazon. This is just an umbrella adapter. Um, Westcott makes a fantastic one that's very durable and this allows you to you know, mount your, not only your flash, but also your uh, umbrella onto there. These are known as, by the way, cold shoe uh, flash mounts or cold shoe adapters, or cold shoe umbrella adapters, whatever you want to call them. But they distinguish between cold shoe versus a hot shoe because a cold shoe does not trigger your flash, basically. Okay, so cold shoes don't trigger the flash. Hot shoes are designed to actually have a sink port so you can actually sink to the hot shoe and it will trigger the flash. So this is just an inexpensive cold shoe umbrella adapter and they're like, between 10 to 20 bucks. All right, so you can see how small this guy gets when you fold him up as well. He goes up to about, I don't know, like six feet roughly. This guy costs about 65 bucks, and yes, again, there are cheaper options out there, okay? You can get light stands for 20 bucks. The problem is, 
they don't last you a long time. This guy has, you know, we, me, Justin, Chris, we've used these on hundreds of shoots each year, and we're still on the original set that we have purchased. The only time they'd ever break is if you step on them or you bend them in half or something like that, but these are extremely durable little guys. They're very lightweight, very small. They fit easily in a travel-on bag and so forth. So these are the ones that we recommend. They're really gonna last you much longer than any $20 light stand would. All right, we're done with that guy. Give me the Benro monopod. Now this guy is a Benro monopod. It's with the S4 head, it's about 200 bucks. Now of course, you can buy less expensive monopods for just mounting your lighting gear. But here's what I would say. Do not go and purchase $2,000 of lighting gear and then put it on a $20 Amazon Basics monopod. That's just a recipe for disaster. This is our go-to monopod. And this, by the way, the actual uh, leg itself is the A48FB MG aluminum, magnesium aluminum monopod. What a fantastic name. And you can see that I've actually taken off the S4 head because when we use it just for lighting, we don't need the head on there. We just take it off and then we put this brass spigot over that quarter, uh, I think it actually is a little bit of a larger mount, but basically it adapts this to a quarter 20 screw hole if we need that. But what we do over that is we'd place our light modifier. So we can put an umbrella adapter, but more typically, we're using the Profoto RFI speed ring over this guy, okay? So you can just pop that right over here and then just fasten it to the monopod. Then you'd place your flash of your choice, your modifier of your choice, and you have a fantastic boomstick. Why do we call it a boomstick? Because you can boom it into any position that you want. You can swing it at your producer. Get out of here, Joe. No, I'm just kidding. He's too far away anyway, even though I would like to do that sometimes. Okay, so, and it also sounds cool, by the way. Doesn't it sound cool, a boomstick? Get the boomstick and your client's like, yeah, that's gonna be freaking awesome getting the boomstick. Okay, so this is the typical setup for this, and this is what we're talking about where, you know, if you have just a single speed light, you can mount that to a $20 Amazon Basics monopod, no problem. But when we mount this with the modifier, with the flashes, with the battery and everything, this is gonna be like roughly 15 pounds, and when it catches wind and so forth, it's gonna be 20, 30, 40 pounds of resistance, and you don't wanna be holding that clear up here with $2,000 of lighting gear on a you know twenty dollar monopod, you want to have something that'll actually hold up to it. So this is kind of that go-to route that I would highly recommend for you guys. It's also very small, compact, and lightweight. So when you take everything apart and you compact this up, let's see, compact this up. I don't think that's the right word at all. Whatever. And then Logan, let me give you this speed ring back. Okay. And then you can fold up these little legs on the bottom just by pulling in. There we go. There we go. Okay, this is that travel size. So again, very small, can go pretty much anywhere and uh, be a fantastic boomstick. All right, let me give you this guy and why don't you give me our next semi-portable boom stand. This guy, and there's actually different variants of this, but I believe this one is the Photo Dio. Yeah, this is the Photo Dio boom stand. This guy is about 80 bucks. It's a fantastic stand for what it does and for the price. Um, I've actually been very, very impressed with it. And the cool part about it is that it actually features a um, reflector holder on this, okay? So what you can do is you can boom this out and you can see right here that we have a reflector holder. So right here we can put a reflector there, we can put one up here and it can grip a reflector and then it can boom it to kind of whatever position you want. So it has this little booming port right here. So if we pull this all the way out, come on, come on, there we go. Okay, and you can see that we can actually have an adjustable boom arm and you can raise the whole thing up, you can actually sandbag this. It's actually fairly decent in terms of a semi-portable, rather slightly more heavy duty light stand or reflector or modifier stand. So it's another great one and for the price, it's pretty much, you can't really beat it, it's a great price. All right, let me show them the C stand now. So why don't you grab this guy. This is a Matthews C stand. This is the industry standard when it comes to um, lighting modifications, stands and so forth. Matthews, they, in, in my opinion, I've used a lot of different C-stands. They're all great, you know, to be honest, they're all great, but I prefer Matthews. Why? Because they're at a great price point, it's 130 bucks. They're pretty much Hollywood standard when it comes to lighting gear. And they also feature very ergonomic knuckles. So these knuckles are very easy to, uh, they're very easy on the hands. So you can basically adjust this and then boom this into position. I'm gonna put this off to the side for one sec. 
and you can see that. So we can have a booming arm and then the whole stand can raise up several feet. We have large legs that we can put sandbags on and so forth. So this is a fantastic C-stand. So for studio work, we'd highly recommend these Matthews C-stands. All right, so that's it when it comes to our favorite sticks. Let me go ahead and put this guy down. And we also did mention like some other options, you know, on here, like if, if budget is a concern, we have included some other inexpensive options. Just keep in mind that generally when you're going with the less expensive options, they're not gonna be as well built, of course. And so you will be purchasing them more often and they will end up being more expensive in the long run, but that might not matter to you because maybe you just need something right now for 20 bucks, you don't wanna invest yet, and that's completely a viable option. So check out the slide to see more information as well. We're done with this video, let's head on to the next one now.